Hello, I'm Hyoga Kajitani. This time, I'll be explaining Hikivaza. The video is divided into two parts. The first half is Hikivaza including Hikimen, Hikikote, Hikido. In the second half, I'll explain some variations of techniques from normal Hikimen and Hikido, Faint Men, Do and Kote. Next, I'd like to explain about some variations of techniques including Hikimen, Hikikote, Hikido and so on. I think it's more easier to learn when you watch a video so I will explain it wearing my bogu but I'll briefly explain some points. This is a technique where you are aiming at men on the left side from the opponent point of view at the moment that your opponent is trying to evade your right side men strike. By showing faint men strikes on the right side. You can apply this and strike men after hiki men. Or for opponents who tend to raise their hands, you can go for hiki do after showing men. You can also do hiki gyaku do after showing hiki men for those who protect the right do or those who do mido koro kakushi. Here, it is difficult to aim for hiki kote at that time, but you should practice it if you are good at hiki kote or you want to hit hiki kote. Just like I described above, if you can connect hiki men to men or faint hiki men to hiki do, the opponent will have to decide which to defend against. If that happens, it makes things easy for me as I can hit either men or do with a feint. After that, it became easy for me to make my own pattern. When your opponents realize this, they will try to avoid being hit more and more. These opponents will tend to follow you to hit you or follow you to avoid being hit. For these players, you can let the opponent get close and use Kuzushi Vaza. The important point of Kuzushi Vaza is that you should use the base of the Shinai as much as possible. If so, you can give much power when a defensive opponent sticks with you. It would be difficult to break your opponent's balance if you use the edge of your shinai, so you should use the base of the shinai to unbalance your opponent. There are many ways to break your opponent's balance like kuzushi vaza to hiki men and kuzushi vaza to hiki do. For me I usually use hiki do for an opponent who looks like he tries to hit hiki men when the opponent sticks with me against my hiki vaza. And I can also choose Kuzushi Vaza to Hiki Gyaku Do for an opponent who tries to hit Mido Koro Kakushi. It's a high level technique so you need to practice, but you can make these choices if you can. And then, there are some players who try to hit Hiki Men first when I try to aim for Hiki Vaza. If so, you can try doing a faster hikimen or creating an advantageous ma'ai for you, or doing a push to hikimen. If you know that an opponent is trying for hikimen, and you swing your shinai to keep up with their hikimen or try to do a feint, there is a chance that you will be hit first. In these cases, Try not to swing or feint, and instead strike while just dropping your shinai. And then, you should hit push to hiki men. If you do so, you can surprise an opponent and you can also threaten the opponent. By making your opponent feel threatened and aiming for a hiki vaza at that time, you can hit them when their reaction times are slower. Finally, there is a technique named Hiki Vaza at parting. It's a technique that you aim to hit at the moment when an opponent step back after you create a situation where you are on the offensive and the opponent wants to break away from the attack. 
In this situation where both are trying to separate, you can still make an attack without it becoming a foul. It is not a foul to go for a strike from this situation as an elementary, junior high, or university student. However, for high school students, hitting at parting is banned because there is a rule for high school students. So you should be careful. If you and your opponent are parting and your shanai is still on top of your opponent's men, it will not count as a foul. If you try to strike after taking just one more step back, it will be counted as a foul. So you can aim for the moment just before the separation between players takes place. Next, you can also create a situation where you haven't quite parted with your opponent, after Hiki Vaza. You can create this situation after making a move after Suba Zeriai. From this position, you aren't separating after Suba Zeriai so it won't be a foul, even for high school students. So, you should aim for this technique. Mr. Chikamoto hit Gyaku Do to men during the Gyokoryuki's final game of the tournament. But it wasn't regarded as a foul and instead counted as a Da Tatsu because there were two Wazas one after the other, without separation. That is the end of my explanation. For the rest of the video, I want to show you some variations of techniques from straight Baza, as well as Hiki men right before separation. And then, let's practice and check yourself while taking a video that we should fix to hit like that and to improve a sharp movement and to make a power of Da Tatsu Storong. Variations Technique, Faint Men to Hiki Men Let's watch it again in slow motion. Variations Technique, Faint Men to Hiki Do. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Variations Technique, Faint Do to Hiki Men. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Variations Technique, Faint Do to Faint Men to Hiki Do. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Hiki Man at parting from Ura side. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Hiki Man at parting from Omo Tay side.
Let's watch it again in slow motion. Kuzushi to Hikimen. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Kuzushi to Hiki Do. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Push to Hiki Men. Let's watch it again in slow motion. How was this video? I explained many things about Hikibaza including Hikimen, Hikikote, Hikido and variations of those techniques. Keep the 5 things in mind. About not striking while stepping back, using your feet properly, making the first step fast, creating the proper ma'ai, and striking techniques and hasuji, as you practice. Let's practice being conscious of various points. And then, it is not good to use only hikimen or hikido as you watch now. If you're only able to do one thing and your opponent reads your intentions, you will not be able to use your vaza. That's why you can combine many variations of vaza and aim for the next vaza because opponents will respond differently to different wazas. It will be hard to learn and practice many different vaza, but you will want a good number to choose from for the many different responses you will get from your opponents. I'd like to conclude my explanation of hiki vaza. There is a temporary rule about not being able to strike or do vaza from subazariai because of COVID-19, but once that restriction lifts and you are able to do vaza from subazariai, I hope that you keep these points in mind and incorporate them into your practice. Let's try these techniques I told you about this time. Thank you for watching the video to the end.